Hey, and welcome to JCC Sunday Schools in Session, where Sunday School matters to God. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. We want to make you all a part of the JCC family. And we also want to tell you thank you for each and every subscriber that has joined us here in the year of 2023. We are so delighted to have you a part of our family. The title of our lesson is The Blessings Amid Trials. And it's coming from James, the first chapter, verses 1 through 8, and verses 12 through 18. All the books we will study in this quarter concerns God's blessings. But this week, we're going to look at God's blessings amid the trials that we may face in our lives. The book of James is written to the Christians who were scattered around the world. And it's a book that is written with two purposes in mind. To correct the corrupt faith that was seeping into the church, because Back then, people were professing faith in Christ, but living a life that was immoral and unrighteous. They talked the talk, but didn't walk the walk. The second reason that you can learn in the book of James is that he wanted to present to the church what true faith in Christ looked like, what it produced in them. And James paints a picture for us that what we do proves whether we are or not children of God. And for this reason, we're going to learn as a result of this study that our behavior, our habits, and the lifestyle, even in the midst of a storm, can really determine if we'll walk in the walk or not. We'll see that this letter of James is a letter of practical living as children of God. And we're going to see that James is concerned about growth, the growth of a believer in faith. And this is the blessing that no matter what we go through, we still can grow amid the situation. So let's get into the lesson and see what it has to offer us. Verse 1 says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Now, James introduces himself. He tells us about himself in his introduction. We see James as a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. And how we see ourselves really determines our walk in Christ. James sees himself as a servant, which is a Greek word called doulios. And that word means bond servant meaning one who's bound to a master. James sees himself bound to God and Jesus Christ. So James tells us again that I'm a slave to God. I'm a slave to the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, we see a mindset and attitude is, is not about him, but about the work that he's called to do. He's a bondservant. He's a bondservant who is bound to Jesus Christ to do the work that Christ and God has called him to do. As we look at him and get ready to get into verses 2 through 4, we're now getting ready to learn how much our attitude towards trials and temptation, how those things can affect us. James is going to tell us something that can help us along the way. Verses 2 through 4 read, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work in patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. First, we know James, like I said, is trying to mature these scattered Christians, more than likely probably going through some hard times as being children of God because it wasn't popular at that time. So in my opinion, James is challenging the way a child of God thinks about the trial. He said, the way you think will determine how you proceed forward. Will it be joyfully or begrudgingly? James tells us to count it all joy. James is not focused on the pain here in the text. He's focused on the process. It's the process that brings about the endurance we need to mature in our faith as we are being tested. See, when the process is finished, it makes us mature. It makes us complete. It makes us lack nothing. The joy is knowing we will mature in our faith so we're able to grow as God desires. The problem with us, we are too busy focusing on the pain many times and not the process, which God uses to work it out for our good. James said, yes, you will fall into diverse temptation. Yes, you will go through some situations in your life. He said, but the trying of your faith, it brings about patience. And he says, let that patience have the perfect work it needs, that it may perfect us and not be able to want for anything meaning that we have come fully through the entire process. And as we have come through the entire process, we are now at a place where we now can be what God wants us to be. 
Let me give you an illustration. When we know the process of iron, iron has a, in its raw form, has a lot of impurities. But when we put it in the fire, the fire gets so hot that it burns away all of the impurities. And as it goes through, it becomes tried and true. It becomes stronger. It's the process that allowed the steel to become stronger and not have the impurities that could cause weak points. And this is what James is trying to get us to see, that attitude of being able to understand that God is working something out for our good will bring about that process of becoming what God wants us to be. It's the attitude behind it. Do we have the attitude to know that God is working things out for our good? That even though in the midst of a storm, we still can be tried and true in in our lives. That even in the midst of a storm, We can allow the process to make us tried and true, to show God how we can trust on him, believe on him, put our hand in his hand to allow the process to make us what God desires to be, which is to mature us, to grow us. Verses 5 through 7, as we continue to read, he's going to show us that road to maturity. He says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, to give it to all men liberally and unbraid if not. And it shall be given him, but let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave of sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think it that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. When we look at these here and get ready to unpack these verses, we see that James says if you don't understand the process, if you don't understand the process of spiritual maturity because of a storm, we need to ask God for wisdom. Now, many times we take that verse, we singularize it and make it just one verse. But remember, James is completing a thought. He's continually a thought about spiritual maturity, about being in the midst of a trial. When we look at this here, James said, when you're going through something, when you're going through and you don't understand the process, we need to ask God for that wisdom to help us to gain that spiritual maturity. We see here that James is seriously looking at the character of a believer. He's saying that if we do not have what is needed, we can go to God. He says, but let him ask in faith, not wavering. James is saying that you got to go to God and trust God that he's going to give you, to trust God to give you the wisdom you need. He says, for he that wavereth is like the sea driven with the wind and tossed. He says, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So James is saying, if we have wavering faith, if we have a faith that has not matured to a place where we can be all that God wants us to be, he said that we're unstable. And he said, you're double-minded. And a double-minded mind is unstable because it's going back and forth. And James is saying, you can't have that and be all that God wants you to be. He's saying you have to be in a place where you do not lack the wisdom. And if you don't lack the wisdom, then you'll be able to act out in faith to do what God wants to be done in these day and time. God cannot bless us with wisdom to conquer our problem if we don't believe he will give it to us. When it says double-minded, he's talking again about that wavering mindset, that mindset that goes back and forth, doubt and faith. Doubt and faith. It's like a wishy-washy type of uh, belief. And James is showing us that that there will cancel out faith every time. He said you got to have a mindset that you will trust God in the midst of the process. James is saying again, we need wisdom to go through the trial. We need it to get to the results God is looking for. And as we go through the trial, we don't always know going on. So we can see this in another way that you have to have the faith, faith in God to go through those various storms. Verse 12 says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. James is saying again, Happy is a person who endures temptation, because when he is tried or tested, he will receive this crown of life. Let's break this down a little bit. See, the endurance brings about the crown. When we go through something, it's the process of going through something that brings about the benefit. So what is the crown of life? It is the benefit of eternal life. 
And eternal life is the crown of life and his promise to all who love him. That there shows us something again of the necessity of being obedient to God. We can't conquer temptation if we don't endure. James says, blessed is the man that endures or perseveres. He understands that we have to go through something. You have to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, even though you're going through something in this lifetime. And as we go through it, we come out better on the other side. Verse 13 through 15 read, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. We all know that God is sovereign, and God will test us, but he will not tempt us to do evil. Now, many people don't believe that God tests us, but go and look back in the book of Genesis when he tested Abraham. The Bible specifically says he tested Abraham. James is showing us something here that trials will bring on temptation. Allow me to give you an example. When we face hard times, we may be tempted to fix the problem ourselves. But we must learn not to lean onto our own understanding. We must learn to trust God in all our ways, knowing that he will direct our path. Another thing, he didn't say the devil will tempt us. No, he says we are tempted when we are drawn away by our own lust and enticement. I don't say that the devil won't use that to his advantage. The reason I say that, We have a tendency to always point the finger at someone else, just like Adam did. That woman you gave me caused me to sin. We sin because we want to sin. We have to stop pointing the finger at other people and accept responsibility for ourselves. And James is saying, take responsibility for that sin. Understand that sin involves a, a process. It comes out first as deception. The very root of sin is deception, and deception is full of unbelief. It never wants us to believe in the promises of God or his word. Next, we see the text says it comes about with desire. We are driven away by our own desires and enticement. That's the natural progression of disobedience. Why? Because we'll act out our desires. That stuff gets into our mind, and then it's acted out in disobedience. And James shows the final stop of sin is death. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So when we are in the midst of a trial or tribulation, when we're going through something, do not allow ourselves to be so tempted that we want to go in and do things our own way and and try to do it our way because it's only going to birth sin. And when sin is finished, it's going to bring about the death that he's talking about here. Verse 16 through 18 reads, he says, Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begot he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creature. As we look at this right here and begin to see, James says every perfect gift comes down from above. It means that it's showing us that God is good and perfect. There's no imperfection in him. And anything that God gives comes about perfect and without imperfection. He's the father of light, meaning he's unchangeable. Temptation leads a person to darkness, but God is perfect light that doesn't even cast a shadow of darkness. We know that if we allow him, he is the father of those lights with whom there's no variableness, neither shadow of turning. We know as we hold on to God's unchanging hand, then we too can know that he'll never leave us nor forsake us in darkness. His presence always casts pure righteousness, which is the light of God. So God, so he's trying to show us that we have become this first fruit. We are the firstborn that was born from the word of truth. We will be gotten of his own will be God. He us with the word of truth. We have been begotten because of that. Ephesians 4, 24 says that, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. This is what we are to be. 
that our trial and tribulation will bring about a transformation. It'll bring about a maturity process for us to come and become more and stronger in the Lord. That we will be a body of believers that no matter what it is, no matter what's coming at us, we will still be able to stand firm and stand true no matter what. As we conclude our lesson today, we see that James is saying that even though you may be caught in a storm, if we will allow the process to have its way and allow ourselves to hold on to God's unchanging hand, to not waver, to not lose sight, to not lose uh, uh, our faith that God will see us through and make us be what he desires us to be, which is sanctified. Because sanctification is a process. It doesn't happen overnight. It goes on as a period of time. And when we leave here and put on our heavenly bodies, then with the, the process will finally be completed. He's saying that there is blessings in the midst of a storm. Are we willing to stand the test of time and receive the blessings that God has for us of spiritual maturity, of growing our faith, of being to a place where we depend on God and not on ourselves, to, to look away from sin and always look to the hills from which come our help, knowing that our help comes from the Lord. Well, again, this concludes our lesson for today. I pray you enjoy it. If so, show it by com commenting and leaving us a thumbs up. Also, subscribe if you have not done so already. Well, that's all for this week. Come back next week. Same time, same channel. Be blessed now.